<laughs> my study? Mm -hmm. I, so I study stealing behavior in spiders. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my name is Megan Fitzgerald. I am here from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm studying for my PhD in the zoology department. And I study stealing behavior in spiders mostly because I really like spiders, um, but also because I've studied stealing behavior since I was in an undergrad program where I studied stealing behavior in dung beetles. And I like the sort of strange behaviors that are really, really adaptive, so they make it really successful for the adults to do these things, um, and they have more offspring, and that's really great. But in terms of when you look at it for humans, um, stealing's not so good, uh, and there's a lot of moral stuff that goes along with it. So I think it's really interesting to look at that um, sort of odd behavior that isn't really well studied. Mostly I do that by observing the spiders on their own webs, um, and they have a lot of little bitty spiders that steal food from them. So I keep track of what species of spiders are on those webs, because um, there's multiple little tiny spiders all at the same time stealing from this really huge spider called Nephila. Um, and then what I'm trying to look at is the relationship between social behavior, because spiders are not normally very social. They don't like anything being on their web. Um, so Nephila will let other Nephila have webs near them, and the kleptoparasites, the little tiny spiders, also allow other tiny spiders to be near them. So there's some sort of relationship, at least in spiders, between the things that make it okay to have other spiders close by mm -hmm. and the things that make it easy to steal food. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. This girl, this female, is a Nephila claviface. They call it the golden orbeer because you can see these threads are really gold. It's really, um, it's not very sticky, but it's really, really strong. Um, so you can pull on it really hard. And the Nephila is obviously really huge. I mean, this is the same size as my hand about um, when they're really big. And this one's not full grown. This guy right here is male. So it's much, much, much smaller. And if, let's see if there are kleptos on here. So this, which you probably can barely see, is a klepto spider. Tiny, tiny, tiny little guy. Mm -hmm. Silver. Mm -hmm. um, they're normally the species Argyrodes. Some of them are another species called Rumphaea. And they live entirely on these, these Nephila webs. Um, normally it's on the barrier strands, so not the main orb, but these little pieces that are in front or behind. And this one's pretty new. This web wasn't here maybe two or three days ago, so it's, uh, it doesn't have that many kleptos, but there are some webs that I've seen that have up to 15, 20, sometimes 30. So here's another one right here. That's another species. And I'm sure that there are probably more, but it's really hard to see them in the rain because they're so tiny. That thing that she's doing right now, like when I touch it, she shakes. Mm -hmm. That's to scare off predators. That's her doing that, it's not me. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I touch it and I move it a little and then she shakes the web and says, get off, get off, I'm huge, I'm scary, you know. Um, and she's probably a full-grown female because she has a, a male that's on the web, um, but it's really hard to tell the difference between the two normally. Okay. So I am pet-sitting <laughs> or feeding bats for Sabina Wintergeist who is at the University of Berlin, I believe, in Berlin, Germany. Um, she's doing a PhD there, and she's uh, studying essentially personality types of bats, so individual personalities and how they react to different sorts of um, disturbances like people coming nearby and scaring them and whether they keep feeding or they wait for a while, that sort of thing. Words it and like captures how much food they're, they're giving. Um, and obviously they have a bunch of them around here and then there's a computer in the center that records each individual and can tell how much they fed over the night. And generally hang out in those buckets. They're a little easier to see in the other one. And 
a banana each with some pollen on it for protein. And then this little thing is just um, milk powder with honey. To get all their food groups. I'm not doing anything with the flowers. Um, they just, we just leave it right here and they come in and take whatever they need. I didn't take a really good biology class until I was in college. Um, so I always liked being outside, I always liked camping, and I really just was one of those kids who wandered around in the woods all by myself when I was young. In Illinois, Northern mm -hmm. Illinois and Colorado, uh, we moved around a lot. But it wasn't until I started college and I took this class with, um, it was just a general biology class with this professor that like, she was amazing. She jumped on desks to show you like how cell pathways worked and she ran around the room talking about all these crazy things and it was like all of a sudden this biology thing was the same thing as nature, you know? It wasn't a separate thing, it wasn't boring and all you're talking about is genetics or all the things that I, I don't really find that interesting. Um, so that was really when I decided to study uh, biology and then I got involved with research and just really really enjoyed it so that's how I ended up here at La Selva. Awesome, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, no problem.